Hi guys and welcome to Moto Scotti and welcome to a two video series of the final upgrades to my kit Trans Am. That's right, I've decided to pull all the remaining service repair and upgrades into two videos. In this part one I'm going to go through changing the valve cover gaskets as well as repainting the valve covers themselves, then changing the O2 sensor, then also changing the power steering fluid, the radiator hoses and the thermostat and last but not least also the accessory belt. Let's go! So here's what I'm dealing with. These are the valve covers that I want to take off and uh, repaint. You can see the paint has kind of chipped in various places and I've also noticed from getting behind the car, underneath the car, is that like these valve covers on the left side are starting to leak. It's not bad but still it's a good time to get them all done and then you have this PCV valve and all these uh, rubber grommets that I want to replace because it's it's old and it's leaking. Or you can see it's not really leaking, but it's all a bit slightly oily up on top. So I'm not really worried about the driver's side, but on the passenger side, it's going to be slightly more tricky to reach because I have to take off a bunch of things. I have to look into where it's actually connected to, make some space, make sure I take it apart in a way that I can still put it together. Now moving on to all the equipment I need. I obviously have the new gaskets. I use uh, I want to use Felpro. We've heard a lot of good th things about them. New rubber seals, which I'm not going to apply any RTV or other sealant. I don't think I need to with these. Then I have a new PCV valve. Not that the one that I have now is broken, but I just have it. New rubber grommets. Two, I have another two just in case I break one or two of these. I also have a new oxygen sensor because I haven't really been able to replace the old one. Well, I got access to it before, but it's a bit stuck. I'm going to wire wheel it with some of these. I have different types. Obviously then, some gas mask, some filler primer, some red paint, more filler primer, my uh, trusty gloves and this clip-on thing to clip on the spray paint gun. All right, let's have a quick look in here. So basically, all I have to do to free this up is to take this off. Basically, I'm just going to loosen up this so I can push this aside. And then there are three bolts, uh, four. One, two, three, four. And I should be able to lift out the valve cover. And I expect a lot of dirt in here. If I look at the PCV valve from below, I think it's pretty crusty. I have a new one. Yeah, we have it all disconnected and uh, unbolted. I haven't been able to lift this up. It's, the engine is actually still warm from the last uh, trip I took to bring it over here. PCV valve, as you could see before, quite crusty underneath. I'm just going to replace that right away, put a new one in. So far, I haven't managed to take the valve covers off by hand. They're pretty much stuck on there with the old seal. Get this uh, rubber hammer and tap it all around and try to Loosen it up and try to open it like this. It turns out to be quite a quite a thing to take this out, even though there's nothing in its way. Near. I had to take the, the the bar out that is holding the alternator to the the block. And there's also a plug here with the bolt there. So what I would recommend for you to do instead of just getting the bolts out of here, which put me in a lot of trouble fixing the alternator, as you will see shortly, is to take the alternator off completely from the get-go. So you have free access here to the front side of the valve cover and it won't hit anything. And just take the entire alternator off from the beginning and it's easy to do and then you won't have any trouble with the rest. My plan now, since there is a little hole in here, is to basically drop this in here and try to hold it on with uh, some kind of screwdriver just so I can get the initial thread working and the bolt it in uh, like that without having to remove all of that. And now, hopefully, I can take it out. There you go. That's how clean it is in here, how oh, dirty. Here's the uh, inside of the driver's side of the valve cover. I have already started to clean it up a little bit. You can see with this plastic tool. I mean, the crust is just amazing. Here is exactly the part where the old gasket blew, but basically came up which would explain why there is a little bit of an oil leak down at this point. So this element here is bolted on right down 
there and then there's another clamp down there which is holding on the lower hose whatever that is and these are just hoses that I can move around and then there's the ignition cables that are overlapping the valve cover also so and this I can just pull out you can see this it goes into one of these rubber grommets where I can gonna have to replace them anyways this is all loose and wiggly here so just before I lose focus here this actually goes into there and then the bolt on the left is what's holding the bracket that's holding this tube here that goes into here it's almost loose it's just a little bit lopsided so it's not as easy to bolt off going through here than that one here on the right looks like I solved the mystery I had to take this cap off to access there's a second bolt up down here not just that one and this will hopefully loosen up the whole thing so you would think that I've taken everything off that I have to to remove the valve covers but this hose here with the metal part is still blocking the valve cover to come off so I ended up removing this bracket here also with the 30 millimeter nut down there because otherwise it's hitting also the valve cover on that side so that might just save me from having to move this hose here. I just have to label these bits here to make sure that I remember to plug them back in here and this connector as well. Now I've pretty much just connected everything up to this pipe here. Okay guys as you can see I did manage to get it off. Uh, it is really a tight fit. The only thing that I'm gonna have to be careful about is that when I put it back on to wrap the freshly painted valve cover in some kind of cloth or I'm gonna have to look out for that in order not to scratch it against all the little things here there and then this hose of course and make sure I don't clip any cables here here we have it this is the driver's side cover you can see there's the as I mentioned before uh, the seal broke here or kind of lifted over here same thing on the passenger's side on the outer side but the passenger side looks a little bit cleaner compared to the driver's side All right, I've taken this brace here off to get more clearance on this side. But I think in order to really be able to push it over there, I need to take this 
tube off or even just uh, place it somewhere else. I might be in luck. I took off the radiator hose up here. Uh, this one. Just basically to give me more, more space on this side to slide in the valve cover. And let me show you what I meant. That's this one here. Down there. That's loose now. Now I should be, it's just holding the boldest part of the block. And the nut is here. So now I should be able to slide in the valve cover with ease. I finally got it in. Now I should, I mean, obviously it's a bit scratched, but I can repaint this by hand. Just need to grab. That's it. Put the bolt on. That was quite a, an experience. Now I'm gonna bolt this down, uh, and then I put a, put the dipstick in. I'm gonna put the water hose back in there, and then before I tighten everything else back down, I have to hand paint a couple of scratches here, there, and as well the back if I can reach it. I got a new oxygen sensor, it's something, a new AC Delco replacement, let me just get it out here. Which is something I wanted to replace a long time ago, but with the tools I had at the time I couldn't really get in there properly and it, it is a bit stuck, so I got this set of sockets for kind of really nice rims with this uh, rubber coating. So why did I get th these ones is I need a socket that's deep enough to go in here because I can just take up that cable of the old oxygen sensor, it's held in there quite loosely anyways, it's come out before, so I can guide in the socket and then take it off. So I finally got it out. I cleaned the exhaust with some uh, brake clean. Right off the bat you can see that the design of the new one, even though it's also a absolute factory replacement AC Delco, is a little bit different. This element seems to be a bit sturdy, more sturdy. The important thing when you put an OC, uh, O2 sensor back in is not, not to touch the uh, sensor element in the top, that's why it has this cover. There's already a little bit of grease on the thread, so I'm just gonna wait a second and then carefully put it in. But the 22, just with the wrench, should do the trick. Here I'm guiding the closed end of the 22mm wrench through the cable and on the sensor so I can tighten it properly. Now I'm plugging the connector into the receiving end. Well, as you saw, I wasn't really able to reach the wrench down here. It's from underneath or from top. It's just too, too narrow. But I really hand tighten it as tight as I could. I don't think this is going anywhere. It has a little bit of anti-seize on it also. And then you just need to clip in the cable here before you. Well, you clip it in here, connect it. There's a little connector. 
and then you have this cable hold where you can just clip it in from the side and then this isn't this is held in place here also so anyway that was a complete success i've put everything back together the new o2 sensor is installed and everything is back where the way it should be I'm measuring the fluid level before I drain the reservoir. It's on full. I'm making sure to fill the same amount of oil as I took out. Here we have the old oil in here, the old uh, power steering oil, and here the new one. I'm using transmission oil, Dexron, Dexron 3 from Manol, the one I put into the transmission of the car. So if my calculations are correct, these are just about 370 millimeters, uh, milliliters, sorry. I'm gonna put the exact same in here and put that in the car. Once I was done with the maintenance, I went on a test drive and turned the wheels lock to lock numerous times to get the fluid circulated through the systems and then I checked the level again and I only had to top it off slightly. So here's the inside of the thermostat housing, still quite gooey, but well the housing actually looks fine, it's not that much, no crust in here luckily, just here a little bit on the edge. Yeah we have the old thermostat, gasket, new gasket, new thermostat. Let's clean everything up, flush the radiator, paint this housing and put everything back together. Hold on a second guys, please invest in a proper thermostat housing gasket. The one that you'll see me install just after this lasted for a couple of days until it started to leak. So don't get the paper AC Delco gasket, get the proper rubber AC Delco gasket. You'll find the parts number in the description down below. With the rubber gasket you won't have to add any additional sealant, it will fit just perfectly. So save yourself the trouble and get the proper rubber gasket from the beginning, even if it's a bit more expensive than the paper one. It's money well invested and you won't have any issues if you install it from the get-go. Because I want this to be watertight and fit perfectly, I'm cleaning the bolts with a wire brush.
I had flushed the system two years ago, but as it never flushes completely, it can't hurt to do it again. it's getting dark and I've just put the let me find it the lower radiator hose on there is the end that goes into the radiator and then here into the water pump I had to use the old clamp well it looked pretty new anyways because the the one I had in the package was not long enough in order to mount in that area which is apparently much longer than a uh, wider than in in the other parts look at this hose I had to cut it apart to drain the water first and then I had a hell of a time to get it off even though the clamps were gone full of rust I suspect they are probably also the, the very first ones GM branded this car ever had on and here I'm just waiting for the cap to dry before I've uh, mounted the new radiator hose here on top. I'm just waiting for the upper mounting point, which I've painted the housing, to dry. Here it is. Alright, here I have a brand new accessory belt for my Trans Am. Obviously, the old one started to squeak, so I got a brand new one. The It's the AC Delco, this is the part number. The paper looks quite yellowish already. I mean, looks like it's been on the shelf for quite a few years, but I hope that the belt is still good. If it's been stored properly, it shouldn't be an issue. And I don't see any any cracks anywhere. I'd say we'll see once we install it. All I need now is the uh, half inch uh, ratchet just to get into the uh, belt tensioner and lift the belt tensioner up. And before you take the belt off it's always good to have a look at how the belt actually routes around those pulleys. Here we have a sticker that shows the accessory drive belt routing. It's always good to take a picture before and if you don't have that sticker Let's have a look at this belt here, the old one. It doesn't look bad at all, actually. To be fair, I don't know why it squeaked. Or maybe the squeaking is coming from somewhere else. This one is a Deco. I got AC Delco ones. Hmm. Let's see. Only way to find out is to test uh, to start up the engine with the new belt.
So that's it for part one. Part two will be up shortly. If it's already up, you'll find the link down, in the, down below in the description. If you don't want to miss any videos, just subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell. Thank you and bye.